Hello, this video will provide a demonstration for how to create the pivot table you see on your screen in front of you. So this is using the restaurant data you can find on D2L under data files, chapter three data files. So I have it pulled up right here. I'll move the PowerPoint out of the way and we'll get right to it. So the first step when making a pivot table is to put your cursor somewhere inside the data. As a reminder, if you skip this step, it'll make things a little harder for you later on. Um, but you can work your way back into it. So first, have your data selected, go to the Insert tab on the ribbon up here, and then choose Pivot Table on the far left. You can see the work of what I had done before by what I had my cursor in pops up in this uh, data field here, saving me from having to actually type it in. And then I'll leave the things at the default and choose OK. Now, this gives me a blank pivot table thing over here and a list of pivot table fields over on the right side. So now what I'll do is I will drag the items that I need into their respective locations. So just so you remind you what we're going for, we're going to want the count of restaurants. So how many restaurants are in a certain price range? And then we're going to split them up by the quality rating of their, uh, of, their, of their food. So we need three things. We need restaurants, we need the quality rating, and the meal price. Now I can check these boxes, but if I do, it'll kind of decide for me what it wants. So we don't necessarily, necessarily want to do that. You're better off clicking and dragging things to where you want them. So I'm gonna wanna know how many restaurants, so that's a values issue. How many restaurants? have a certain quality rating that was on the row label, and then we're dividing the columns based on the meal price. Now obviously we didn't get exactly what we wanted for several reasons. Let's see the first issue, and they can be solved in any order. But the first problem we have is that the sum of restaurants here, it should be a count. We're not interested in adding them all together. So to edit this, we're gonna come down to the arrow that's at the, at the bottom right here, right here, sum of restaurants. Click on that and choose Value Field Settings. Then all we need to do is change the sum to the count, like so. Just click right here, select Count, and choose OK. All right, that's one step in the right direction. We still have two problems. One, our prices are listed individually, and our row labels are in the wrong order. Well, let's start with the prices problem. So to group the prices, we just click on one of them, right click, I should say, specifically right click, not just any kind of click, and choose group. As I said, we're trying to group the prices, so we use the group tool. Now this is going to ask us for what we want our starting price to be, our highest price to be, and what size groups should we put them in? Well, it'd be nice if they would go from 10 uh, in groups of 10, but because starting at 10 doesn't go to 48 evenly, we'll go ahead and adjust this to 10 to 49. And this will give us a nice, neat groups of 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, and 40 to 49. So I clicked OK already, but that's the only thing we had left. Group by 10, from 10 to 49 by, by 10, and choose OK, and that gives us this. So all we have left is to reorder our options. So we have it right now alphabetically, right? So E for or excellent has E, good has G, and then a V for very good. And what do we want? Well, excellent is actually the most uh, superlative of the three options. So we want it to be at the bottom. So good, very good, excellent. So all I do for this is right click on the word excellent, and then come down here to where it says move and select Move Excellent to End. And that moves Excellent and the corresponding data down to the bottom. Good, very good, and excellent. So let's compare this to what we have on our PowerPoint. Looks pretty good. Okay, now, unfortunately this is only phase one. We have a couple more things that we'll do, and that is to change, uh, we'll do one at a time, so we don't need to go past where we wanna go. So rather than have the values displayed as, uh, as integers, as a count, instead we'll look at expressing them as percentages 
of the whole. So to do that, we're going to come back to our, our options over here in our count of restaurant and change the value field settings to show values as. Now we click on this tab over here, it takes us away from where we were, it takes us over here, and we have this show values as calculation button. And so we'll choose percent of grand total. Now it's worth noting that column totals and row totals, these other two options, uh, can be quite useful, but that's not what we're going for here. We'll just choose percent of grand total, click OK, and we get the output we were expecting. So that, that changing that one setting gave us this output that we wanted. So simple as that. And finally, the last thing that we're going to do is change this from a count of anything to uh, the average of wait time. You see, after all, we have a wait time variable that we're just not even using right now. So why are we wasting information? Well, you know, we're getting interesting information here. We can see that uh, clearly we have well, no data here in this price range. There's no good food that costs at least $40. Uh, and there's very little excellent food for less than $20. You can get some interesting insights from here. But no, let's look at our wait times. Because after all, you might assume that wait time is something that you care about. Now again, it defaults to sum. We don't want sum after all, we want average. So we go back to our value field settings change not to count this time, but to average, and choose OK. Now we get a little bit of some ugly formatting here. So I'm going to select our data, and then on the Home tab, I will lower the number of decimal points by clicking this button over here uh, a couple times, the Decrease Decimal button, until we have a little bit more of a presentable, presentable format. Now where is my file? Here we go. Ah, I see that the PowerPoint used one decimal point. That's okay. We just take away one more. Okay. So that should match our desired output. It does. Excellent. So this concludes the tutorial, the demonstration for how to make pivot tables.